Welcome everyone to day three of Imagine. Edge Impulse Imagine is today uh, at the end. And uh, today is our last day, but we are super excited about what's ahead. I mean, we've got a whole day ahead of us and there's a lot of interesting things coming up. We start off with a bang. We have Massimo Banzi, co-founder of uh, Arduino, um, joining us for the first keynote. And then following that, we have two really interesting panels on, uh, on TinyML and uh, in general, embedded ML and how we can together, uh, you know, kind of make this movement even bigger than what it is today. Uh, following that, there's gonna be a lot of great workshops from uh, uh, community members. And there's also a couple of project showcases from some of our uh, really interesting community members that are doing some really, really cool projects. I I'd advise you guys all to be um, watching on YouTube um, throughout the day for all the different, uh, different activities that are happening. Uh, but without any further ado, I wanna introduce Massimo Banzi, co-founder of Arduino, and he's gonna be talking about democratizing embedded ML. Massimo, welcome. Hi, hi Alessandro. Thank you for inviting me, it's, uh, it's, it's really great. And uh, so, yeah, so today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about <clears throat> my journey to get to embedded machine learning and some of the things that I think I learned with Arduino that we can probably apply to, to, this, uh, to this field. So first of all, as I said, my name is Massimo Banzi, I'm a professional nerd. So, but what, so how did I become a professional nerd? Actually, it was very interesting because I started learning electronics when I was six and I used this kit that you see here, which was made by a German company when I was a kid. So every electronic component is like a little block and you put it together and you can build circuits that are magnetic. And then there was a book that explained all different things. And imagine when I was six years old, it was a long time ago. And at the end of the book, they were even explaining to you how to do logic gates and uh, so this 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 slide here says the secret of the computer so they were explaining how to build logic gates with those little blocks so in a way it was very interesting because i started learning about electronics before i have any understanding of physics any advanced mathematics and in a way you know i i got intrigued by that particular process because in a way i was i i I'm still very interested in understanding how do you make something that's supposedly complicated into something that's simple to understand for people. And, you know, years later, a lot, many years later, I started teaching in this school in the northwest of Italy, in Ivrea, and then while working there with a lot of very intelligent people that have no background in technology, I started to figure out different ways to teach electronics and I started to dig into the way in the past, in the way I learned. And in the end, the output of the work that we did at uh, Ivrea was uh, essentially, you know, Arduino. And, um, and now Arduino, it's, you know, I guess if you've, <laughs> unless you've been living under a rock, but if <laughs> you don't know what Arduino is, but it's quite popular as a platform for people to learn prototype and build with electronics. And our motto right now is enabling anyone to innovate by making complex technologies simple to use. And the tools that we build essentially reflect that. We build tools that enable anyone. Because one of the big learning from Arduino is that we wanted to enable anyone to use the technology behind microcontrollers to build modern objects, interactive, intelligent objects. Later on, it became interactive and connected objects. But the idea is don't try to change the way professional developers do things because they're professional developers, but try to enlarge the audience. How do you go out of your audience to talk to other people that are, could be interested in the technology, but they don't, they, they look at this and it looks too complicated. So Arduino in a way became a building block for things like 3D, the op first open source 3D printers, a lot of drone platforms as Ardupilot started as an Arduino project. 
And then uh, people build robot, and then people build the project like sign language. This is a sign language converter um, to help people who cannot uh, speak. It's also recently been used in projects like this, uh, uh, you know, machines that help people, uh, you know, during the first wave of the COVID pandemic, or as to build community sensors to detect radiations in Japan, or I'm really fond of the project that this group in, <clears throat> in Switzerland does, which they do biology and other kind of uh, research using hardware that's kind of derived from Arduino. One of the aspects of Arduino is it's essentially open source, so this involves a lot of sort of uh, building upon our technology. And um, so, for example, this project is very interesting because they reuse the laser from a gaming console, from the DVD player of a gaming console, to create a microscope. Uh, so a laser scanning microscope. So once you create a technology that almost anyone can use, and you work at, in a way, sort of simplifying or demystifying, actually, uh, the way you talk about a certain technology, the number of people who can really take advantage of that uh, increases incredibly. And then you start to have people from all different fields that kind of can combine what they know with technology, digital technology in our case, and they can start to make amazing things. So, for example, this is a project that a teenager did of a piece of luggage that follows you around following your Bluetooth, or this is very interesting because it's a project I did with my students a few years ago. It's, it's, it's a device that uses micropayments and IoT to make donation to charities every time you put some money in your piggy bank. But the interesting thing about this is that this was done at the end of two weeks where the first day my students didn't know anything about electronics. And at the end of the second week, they were building IoT connected devices that were using API to make micropayments. So this, again, is a demonstration that if you take something complicated and you make it simpler, you can really change the world, literally, if you want, because you're really enabling people to do all sorts of crazy things. So today, Arduino, in a way, is a, is, is, is a quite mature, in a way, platform. We've been around for quite a few years. We noticed that there is this interesting trend that Arduino is easy for beginners, but it's fast for professionals. So a lot of pro users are starting to use, or are actually been using for a while, Arduino to build also professional tools some numbers about Arduino, the community is huge, there's a many million people following Arduino on the website, a lot of people in the different social media. So in a way, it's a really, really big. I saw this stat that says Arduino is like one of the first 3,000 websites in the world, which is kind of crazy. Um, so it's a huge community and it's made of a lot of people that had no interest in embedded development as it's done classically because they didn't even know what that was. So now the tools that we build are designed to enable more sophisticated users. So this is the, a board that has a lot of sensors on board, the Cortex-M4 with Bluetooth. So this one is used quite a bit in some machine learning applications because of this uh, little kit that we develop. Uh, with um, Harvard and uh, and it's featured in an edX course uh, but also we have tools we develop for this is a platform that's very useful in smart agriculture uh, this is a platform this is kind of the building block of our more professional product is a dual core microcontroller platform that has all sorts of uh, connectivity options uh, high density expansion it's I mean, probably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, microcontroller module available on the market. And based on that module, we have different expansion. Like this is a 
Vision Shield. It's a module you can snap on the board and gives and gives you access to a low power camera and microphones so that you can do uh, audio or kind of video computer vision applications or you can snap this on this board and you can have access to all the different uh, interfaces because this board has 160 ios that you can take advantage of or you can snap it inside this box and then you have essentially a very powerful industrial controller with all the different ios that you might ever need uh, right there available for you so i think that's one of the one of the very interesting thing about the evolution of arduino is this you know the fact that now with the same kind of knowledge that you learn when you are at the beginning of your journey you can then now program very sophisticated so this this device is uses the software which is built upon a real-time operating system which is embedded OS by arm so it's a very sophisticated but the but the basic principle are the same you learn the first day and obviously, we have a new family member that we just launched. Which this is called Nikla. It's a it's a family. This is the first uh, member of the family. It's a 23 millimeter little board that's literally packed with super professional Bosch sensors and Bluetooth low energy or Bluetooth smart uh, module with uh, Cortex M4 on it and all different kind of interfaces so you can use it standalone you can use it connected to a portenta you can use it connected to your computer so you can and in the sensors they all support different form of tiny machine learning algorithms so it's like an ingredient that you can put in any device to to really start using tiny ml so well, so let's let's go back a little bit to <laughs> to my path. So at some point a few years ago, I started to become very interested in uh, in machine learning. So uh, as I said, I started off with microcontrollers. Then our objective became Internet of Things, and I think we created tools within Arduino that made it very very simple to build IoT projects. And you know, our IoT cloud is an example of that. And then I started to look at what's the next complicated thing that we should look into. And I realized there was a lot of opportunities in machine learning. And I started to teach this class, which is called trainable user interfaces. So I teach interaction designers. So I try to combine the two, the two topics. And so we started to look at simple, simple things. Like, for example, this is a workshop I did in Costa Rica where we build tools for children. And this is a simple perceptron based machine that essentially a child can, can use to learn very, very basic principle about classification. So this thing is able to learn how to separate the Lego blocks of a specific color from the rest of the Lego blocks. And, and this was something interesting because it was built on a simple 8-bit microcontroller, but it demonstrated that certain concepts that seem quite complicated could actually be explained so simply that even a child can understand it. And so that kind of turned on a lamp in my, in my brain. And so we had made this project, a product with uh, Intel back in the days, and inside the processor there is a piece of hardware that implemented, they call the neural network. It was more like a pattern matching engine, but it was very interesting because it was very, very simple. So it's something I could try to use with my students. And I worked on a few classes to try to understand how people that have no background in software and math and all understand about machine learning and how do you explain to them, how do you take them from a world where you give instructions in sequence to a world where you essentially train the devices. So for example, these are some examples. So my students build these projects in Copenhagen. This is a knife that you can train and then it tells you if you're using it correctly. So, you know, the, the students got a famous chef to train it. Uh, or this is a window that opens itself automatically depending on what it learns about you. Uh, and how you use the window or this is my favorite 
this device can be trained on all the annoying noises that your neighbors make so that when you're even when you're not at home and your neighbors are making their annoying annoying noises these things start to bang on the wall so you <laughs> they built a device that can basically keep the neighbors in check even if you're not around and this was a very simple audio application so now one of the things that i noticed is that there is a limitation in the ability of us to grow this particular field and you know this the title machine learning is simple and easy it is kind of a joke because you know we are now a situation this is the gartner curve of last year and you, see, you can see that embedded ai is right there at the top as one of the most hyped technologies but then when you try to teach people about this you always gonna hit this uh, problem that a lot of the ways that people teach about machine learning are still so incredibly based in math and we so there is a lot of work to do to really separate the different roles in this particular world no? so if you look at articles that say machine learning uh, simple and easy the first thing you see is something like this and a lot of people have a real hard time understanding these kind of things. But, but then suddenly when you start to explain whatever it's in this formula with a different language, they start to understand. Suddenly they, they understand. So it's a question of the way we talked about this. And um, so obviously some, we made some progress in some direction. So this, uh, the famous DynML book has done quite a bit to make some of the the process and the concepts more understandable obviously edge impulse were here uh, edge impulse is a tool that has allowed a ton of people that lack the deep understanding of all the different uh, uh, you know algorithms and all the different uh, functionality to actually apply machine learning to their problems so obviously this is an important tool and you can see that these are some of the projects that people have built with arduino and edge impulse that you can find on this website we have called project hub so people have built uh, devices to monitor epilepsy or to detect uh, respiratory diseases in pigs or to understand uh, your dog's mood uh, detect cough and uh, you know the projects are a lot i only selected like five but this so this shows you that when you have certain tools suddenly people are really enabled to do to innovate even if they're not maybe specifically somebody who went through uh like a formal education that allows them to deeply understand machine learning so in a way, there is a say I found on a few years ago that says sometimes what you know gets in the way of what you need to learn, but sometimes what you know gets in the way of what you need to explain. So this is, you know, it reminds me of when I started teaching, you know, the first lecture I did, I tried, I basically was teaching in the same way I, I was taught in school. And I realized that my student they don't want that formal system. They want a completely different uh, way of explaining the concepts. And then by working with them for a while, I developed a number of techniques that allowed me to explain a lot of complex uh, concepts of physics and, and electronics in a way that, that doesn't require deep understanding of, of math. And so I think we are in the same place now with embedded ml with where we were in uh, arduino a while ago because basically even the people <laughs> this is the, the 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 person who invented keras even him start to say hey you know a lot of this uh, um, he's talking about deep learning here no but uh, uh, obviously the people who have developed this kind of uh, tools and algorithms have a deep understanding of math they come from that uh, from that background but now we have to separate the people who do ml research the people who invent the algorithms 
to the people who apply the algorithms, to the people who can use the technology to build something useful, useful, but they don't have to understand every single detail about the technology. So it's interesting that a few months ago, he came out and made this statement, which kind of opens the door to let's, let's look at different ways to explain these technologies. Or I was smiling a few, a few days ago, uh, this woman on, on Twitter basically explained mathematical notation in terms of code, and she got 35,000 likes because like a bunch of people says, oh my God, but this is super simple, no? I know this is like a, probably a silly for a lot of, I should have put a trigger warning for engineers or uh, mathematicians at the beginning of the presentation, but still we have to confront this issues because if we find ways to explain these concepts in a different way that really speaks to a wider audience you can reap the huge benefits that we've seen with what happens when you take electronics and you make it something that you can explain to children and then suddenly you know you you have children that build amazing technological uh, projects you know with uh, software hardware and all of that and sensors so there's also like a important element as I kind of come to a close of this uh, presentation. It's quite important. This is a uh, Jaron Lanier from, from one of his books. Obviously it, 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 tiny groups of engineers, sometimes they build technology that change human experience very quickly and basically take our, you know, society in different directions that we don't expect. So this, the relationship between people and this technology, it's absolutely important to be discussed. But for me, one of the things that are very important, but I think it should be important for everyone, is that if these technologies are available only to a small group of people, then you will never have real, you know, real innovation. You will not have multiple people participating in innovation, because remember, that as the technology, as the society becomes more and more digital, you need more people to access those technologies. Otherwise, a few people decide for everyone else. And the last message is try to build tools that look like stairs. Beginners see technology as a wall that it's difficult to climb and they think, OK, this is too much. I'm never going to be able to do it. I'll give up, I'm not climbing this wall. But if you take the same wall and you make it into a set of stairs where you can see that by making a little step followed by another step, you can get anywhere, then you will see a ton of people who take this path and they want to learn what you have to tell them. They will learn your technologies. Suddenly, you will find yourself like Arduino with millions of people that, uh, that know who you are because you turn something that looks scary and unapproachable into something that step by step will take you very far. And, and, and then suddenly this doesn't become so scary. So I think for us, it's very important as technologies to enable anyone to use technology and embedded ML is one of the technologies that now we need to make available to as many people as possible. Thank you very much.